Good day, ladies and gents, and welcome to another episode of Road FS Detail Memoirs, where we meet every week with the movers, the shakers, the detailers, the suppliers, and the vendors. Of course, mad shout out to Buff and Shine. Uh, my name's Jody. And I'm Rod Pusey, and every week Road FS Detail Memoirs is sponsored by Road FS and co sponsored for the next year by Buff and Shine because of a promotion we're doing. Just to remind everybody if you haven't heard about this promotion, Go look for it. All you gotta do is post about Buff and Shine and Road FS, and you have a chance to win a entire box full of Buff and Shine pads, uh, one month subscription to Road FS, some business consulting, all kinds of good stuff just for being in the detailing industry and being awesome. Yep, and so we're really, really excited not only about that, but also our guest, John Coronella, owner of American Detail. I've wanted to get him on here for a long time, and I reached out, and he's like, yes, I'm game. So welcome, John. We're excited to have you, man. Well, thank you very much. I'm excited to be here, and uh, yeah, it's my pleasure to be here, and uh, you know, honor for me that you guys uh, extended the invitation. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're, we're super excited. You know, I'm, when, when we first got on the screen, we're looking at your backdrop, and I'm like, that is a man that is committed to education, to up in his game. So, I mean, that that's the first thing I thought about when I saw your backdrop. I'm like, this is a man dedicated to the craft. Yeah, well, uh, I, you know, I've been in the industry many, many years, not necessarily the detailing industry, the automotive industry many years. And I, uh, back in the day when I was doing collision work, I, I understood and I, knew the importance of education and coming into the detail industry, I just kind of carried that forward. And, and yeah, I just, uh, you know, bettering yourself and educating yourself is going to help better your business and your lifestyle. Right. So yeah. why not? So, so I, that's one thing I didn't know about you is that you've, you've been in the collision industry, right? So it's just conventional repair. Yeah. So I've been, I've been in the automotive industry, you know, altogether over 20 years, I'm kind of going on 25 years now. And for, I would say about 17 of those years, I was in the collision industry, kind of started out as, you know, the grunt guy, you know, sweeping floors and doing light mechanical work. And then eventually I worked my way up to being a, uh, a master collision tech. And I did that for many years. I mean, we used to do, I used to do a lot of the really heavy hit, what we call the train wrecks, right? Cars that you would look at and you're like, ouch, somebody got hurt in that, in that one, you know? And, um, so yeah, I did that for many, many years until, um, until so finally my bones and, and all my joints started talking to me and said, okay, enough is enough. Time to, <laughs> time to move out of this industry and get to something else. Yeah. Boy, boy, your body can really be a, a, a barometer for when you need to change. <laughs> yeah. Some of us Absolutely. just have, some of us just have a bad connection between our body changing and our brain telling us we need to change. I still do a lot of that stuff. So yeah. And so, so it's interesting, John, because you and I have met several times. I met your uh, last year at MT, I actually met you and your wife. Um, you Correct. were there, you went to one of our seminars or, and, and we talked a little bit afterwards, but we've been in and around the industry and seen you for years. Um, so I'm, I'm glad you're finally coming on because, <clears throat> you know, I, people have a misconception that you have to be of a certain group or you have to be in a certain place to be on this show. And, and that's not true at all. We want, we want anybody from the industry to be in there. And especially people that are good ambassadors, you know, that we see that are on social media, that are that are at the events, that really are there to learn um, and to contribute. Yeah, to I mean, contribute yeah. to that stuff. So, so tell us about um, since you've been in the detailing industry, um, you know, kind of lay out what it is that your shop, uh, your specialties, what you work on most of the time, kind of what your 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 hot menu items are, if you will, for for your business. Okay. So just a real quick synopsis. I mean, when I started in, my, in the detailing industry about seven years ago now, I started strictly as a single mobile guy. I mean, I literally took our, you know, my wife's uh, little minivan and, and uh, gutted it all out and, and made a little mobile unit out of it. And uh, literally just started going around knocking on do doors and, and, and just building up business to where about three years ago, I started a shop. So we still have the mobile operation going and I also have a shop now. And um, we pretty much, we are full service detail facility. So I offer anything from your normal, you know, hand waxes to, you know, paint correction to one step, uh, you know, paint corrections to full interior detailing. Obviously now, like you, folks, like you guys mentioned before about the sanit 
sanitizing. And so we were really doing that before COVID anyhow. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, so we, we still offer all that. And um, obviously with the, with the market, with the ceramic coatings, we do a lot of ceramic coatings. Ceramic coatings are probably our number one uh, largest source of, of business that we do. Um, we just recently introduced uh, PPF film. So we still, we're starting to do uh, PPF film as well. And in the next uh, six to eight months, we're going to introduce doing tint, uh, tint on vehicles as well. Mm -hmm. So, so how did you decide? I mean, it's a lot of guys as they're growing and moving. How did you make the strategic decision to go, all right, now's the time I'm going to open a shop. Because I think a lot of people really struggle with making that leap. Sure. Well, it's funny, you know, my many, many years ago, my, my ultimate dream, my ultimate goal was to always have a hot rod shop, right? I always wanted to be custom building cars, chopping cars, you know, doing all that stuff. I mean, I know I actually learned how to do stuff like lead fill from from really old school guys, okay, which, which that's a very lost art, but we'll, yeah. that's a discussion for a different time. Yeah, but, you and um, I need to talk, John. You and I need to yeah. talk. We got a lot in common. <laughs> you guys, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm marking this down like, oh, okay, oh, okay, okay, yeah, anyway. So, you know, that was really my passion. And, and like I said, over the years, as I as I just, you know, as I, as I gained a little more wisdom in my body, my body as well, <laughs> I realized that probably wasn't gonna happen, so, so getting out of the collision industry, I still, you know, automotive is my passion. You know, I've gotten trying to get away from the automotive industry many times and it just it just keeps on pulling me back in. So the automotive industry is my passion. It's 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 where I thrive. Uh, it's where I'm excited to be. So when I started the detailing, my goal was always to eventually have a facility. I didn't just want to have a mobile business, right. but you know, financially, my bank account told me that wasn't going to happen at the time. <laughs> so I had to build my mobile business to be able to acquire my facility, my detail shop. Right. And that's what I did. I mean, I like I said, I literally started with no connections, nobody that I had any network with in starting my, mo uh, my mobile business. And I also started very old school mentality. Until I got hooked up, until I started going to the IDA, uh, which was Mobile Tech, um, I believe it was 2013 or 2014 was my first Mobile Tech. Okay. That was a huge <clears throat> eye opener for me because I didn't realize where the detail industry had grown to all the years I was out of it. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> yeah, and that's and that actually. <clears throat> And we've heard that story a lot from people that they went to an event and they realized there was a lot more people out there doing it. Um, mobile tech has been a huge eye opener for a lot of people and the idea. I mean, we are we are so committed to the idea. We're lifetime members. We're founding club members of the IDA. Um, we sit on some committees with them and it's, it's a real honor for us to do that because <clears throat> we get to speak to people from all, all, all spectrums of the industry. You know, somebody that's just starting out like uh, last year, at an IDA event, we talked to, oh my gosh, I don't even think he was 19. Oh yeah, super young, young kid. kid that just was starting out. Had literally uh, bought a polisher and was scared. He'd never used it. He was scared to touch paint with it. All the way up to somebody that's a master detailer that's been doing it, you know, like yourself for years and years and years. And so that that opens up so many opportunities. And I don't think people realize that. Um, being part of the IDA and being connected, going to Mobile Tech Expo, going to the, the events and, and um, rubbing elbows with other people gives you an opportunity to talk about things you've run up against, things you've had issues with, you know, what do you do in this situation? How do you handle this? Why does GM make their paint so brittle? You know, things like that, that the people, you know, the people that don't, they're not in the industry, they don't understand that. I mean, and I mean, a lot of people that heard that think it's going to be a joke. It's not a joke. I mean, that's, you know, you can flick a, a, a poker chip at a Chevy truck and have it pop paint off. It's, there, it's brittle. So, so um, I think that that is something that's really, uh, it's, it's once people are into it, that's when you see all the certificates on the wall. Because they see the value of that, your customers see that, they see that you're part of it, and that you are really committed to the industry, and you're not just, um, 
the image everybody wants to get rid of is the fly by night guy in the corner with a bucket, you know, and and that I, I feel like that is uh, when people have a shop, that's when you actually feel legitimate. You know, you feel that way. There's tons of people that are that are absolutely legitimate that are just mobile just and mobile, that's their yeah. goal. But if your goal is to have a shop, that's something that really is a big milestone for you. So congratulations. So well, thank you. So as you've built your business, how did you initially you're knocking doors, right? Sure. How, how have you marketed your business? And especially how did you market particular services to create a strong niche? Like for example, in ceramic coatings. So once again, I'll, you know, I, I, I kind of did everything old school. That was my education. That's where I learned things. Even, even, you know, when I first started, you know, just, just, you know, six, seven years ago with the mobile, I was literally out there with a rotary polisher. I didn't, you know, I understood the DA and the random orbital because we already had that type of system in the body shops for sanding. Now, I, didn't, right. I did not even know that existed in polishers at the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was still out there, old school rotary and so forth. Mm -hmm. So I did everything old school, even my marketing, when I did sales and marketing, I was not a social media guy. I did not grow up with social media. And even still today, I'm okay with it, but I, I am not a master of social media marketing, you know, specialist. And I literally went around door to door, knocking on doors, promoting myself, almost like a door to door salesman would back in the day. Um, and I just started networking with, from, you know, one customer, you know, sent me leads to another and so forth and so on. And I, and I literally built my business that way for at least the first two years. And I started getting into uh, corporate centers. So I did a lot of residential stuff. I did corporate centers down here in Florida. We have an area in Boca Raton where it's very large corporate driven, uh, community. So I started, you know, my mind said, well, if we could be at one location and do 10, 15, 20 cars in a day, you're making more, you know, your bank account likes you more than if you're running around all over the place, just doing two cars, three cars in a day. Right. right? So, right, right. so that's, you know, I was, look, I'm, I am a part of my motivation is being money motivated. I don't, I don't personally think there's anything wrong with that. It's not my only goal and dream. So I figure out the numbers and it, and, and that's what I did. And I, it was really just word of mouth up until probably very recent, a couple of years ago, when I started tapping into more of the social media aspect of things, I literally built my business, just word of mouth and, and, um, educating people. As I learned, I educated my customers mm -hmm. in what I had learned and what would be the best I felt you know, for their vehicles and so forth. So that's just kind of the way I built my business. And I still use it. I still use a lot of that method today. Well, and that's actually a really, really uh, effective business model. Years and years ago, um, and we do a lot of different softwares for different industries, um, but automotive, like you, has always been my passion because of my background in restoration and hot rods and, and lead and everything, just like you mentioned. Um, but I was sitting in a conference room in, uh, uh, in Canada, and I was talking to a guy, we were doing a software, we were talking to a guy, and I'm looking out the window and there's a mobile uh, guy out there with a trailer and he's washing one car after the next, after the next. And I was watching him because the way he was spraying, he was spraying this direction so that all the overspray went on the next car he was gonna wash, you know? So you he go. was never getting the one he already washed, he was going the other direction. And I'm like, yep. this guy's got it figured out because he's hit, during a meeting we had in there for about an hour, he hit like four cars. And I'm like, that guy's making more money than I am right now because he's not moving. He's not got the windshield time. And it's some of the stuff that that prompted right. us to build a mobile work order management system like RoadFS was because if you can if you can down the windshield time, as you know, as a mobile guy, then you're making more money. I mean, I most 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 mobile people that are not doing it effective don't uh, are not looking at the numbers and they don't understand that you know doing a $200 service, but doing three of those in a row versus going and chasing $400 services all over town, you're going to make more money going two, four, six, eight than you are going four and then driving for 35 30 minute minutes drive and trying to pick up another one. Yeah. So um, 
it, it's, it's, it's what I do here at the company. I'm the I'm the, the money miser as well. And so I'm looking he's at the Scrooge numbers. Scrooge McDuck. Yep. That that <laughs> I mean, he needs a little icon on his shirt with Scrooge McDuck. Well, and he squeaks when he sits. So if you heard any squeaking, it's me, it's him, not my chair. Yeah. I was told once that I can hold a, cr a piece of crepe paper between my butt cheeks. I'm so tight. So, uh, so that it, it, it's it's important. I mean, like you said, it's not the number one focus. You have to have multiple focuses. But if you're not uh, watching those early, early on in our company, um, my, my accountant sat us down and he said, if you are not looking at your numbers every single day, you're doing it wrong because it changes on a daily basis and you have to grab something and move something and change it over here and move this over there yep. and leverage stuff to get there. And um, one of the things we were talking about right before we started, I think is really pertinent to this conversation. And that is a lot of times people are not willing to do what you did, which is start out and realize you have an end goal, but you can't get from that starting point to that end goal overnight you can't skip steps you can't skip steps you have to do them sequentially sometimes you have to take a step backwards to be able to take two oh, forwards yeah. and um, sure. and i think that's something that is like you keep saying old school mentality is it's a journey and you have to take each one as it goes right you um i look at a lot of trends and i look at the way things grow you know and and you watch things grow and if you do it right it gets to a point where it grows exponentially and i yeah. think this year has really helped people refocus and try to figure out how they can grow because quite frankly if you can grow in this economy and you can grow during this kind of a, a, a year from hell then you can absolutely make it when we get back to a time where it's just time of prosperity yeah Absolutely. You, 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 you said you made so many great points there. You're absolutely correct on every single one of them. I mean, like, for example, there was a time when we, you know, right as uh, I guess so it was about two and a half, three years ago, when we actually opened the sign the lease on our on our facility that we're in right now. And by no means do I feel like I've hit my end goal yet. I still have a lot more to, that I'd like to accomplish, you know, and and uh, part of that is, is, is being so much more involved with the IDA. We do a lot with the IDA now. I'm on a committee and so forth as well, but I want to give so much more of my time to them eventually as well. But, um, you know, I had a crew of a couple of guys and we had two trucks going and, and it's still the time we were strictly mobile. We just, just signed a lease on this place. And then before you know it, I turned around and I found myself by myself again. And um, so I had to figure out how do I juggle that, open up the new shop, and, and there was a little, you know, backpedaling and, you know, sideways movement and so forth. But just like you said, Rod, absolutely. It's, there are times you have a goal in mind, you have plans set, but then you have to figure out, okay, how do I navigate, <clears throat> but still keep myself in that same direction? But maybe there's, you know, up the road, there's a couple of potholes. I didn't realize we're going to be there, you know? Yeah. How do I navigate? <laughs> yeah. There's well, always a pothole. <laughs> and I think that's, people have to have their... their points and times when you step all the way out on the edge of the board, right? You're on the end of the pier and you got your two toes hanging over and you're like, I'm as extended out as I can be. And I'm, I am hoping that there's not a pothole right now for the next 30, 60, 90 days. Right. And we do that. Everybody does that in business. And I think it's important yeah. to stretch yourself at certain times. There are other times when you're like, I'm going to step almost to the end of the board. I'm going to leave myself a little runway because if there's one little pothole, I don't want it to knock me back three steps. Sure. And I think that's hard for people to do also is to say, you know, you could have the you could have the resources to maybe hire three people. But instead, I'm going to hire two and I'm going to and I'm going to build it a little smarter, you know. Yeah. So at the beginning, you mentioned that you and, you know, you stole your wife's minivan. And, yeah. <laughs> and converted it into your business. Um, is Absolutely. She, is she still involved in the business or is it just you and your team? What's the makeup of, of your company? So, yeah, she is, she is involved. So, so it's basically me and her are the team. I mean, I, I, you know, since, um, since I've had the shop, I, I pretty much just like Rod said, I was like, okay, you know what? Let me take a turn. Let me, let me stay by myself. I know I can count on myself a hundred percent. Okay. So let me build from where from from now at that point to to where I want to go, and then I figured once I get to the next plateau, then I'll look to hire and, and, and some, you know more guys on and so forth. And then COVID hit, 
Yeah. So I said, okay, let, let me not, this is not a time to hire. This is a time to just keep your head down and keep crunching and keep going. Cause really in the beginning, we didn't know what was going to happen. You know, right. everything froze up very quickly, but then, <clears throat> um, so we're probably going to get into a hiring phase in the next couple of months here. But my wife does help out with, you know, some of, some of the other uh, logistics, if you will, of, of the business. So, and she, I mean, she's amazing. She's awesome. There's, there's so many things that she does that I could, I just, you know, I go over a list and I say, here, this is what needs to get done. And she goes, okay, get out of the office, go back to work. That's awesome. Ha- having that great. team is amazing. You know, being able to tag team together and to have a wife that is so such mm-hmm. a big impact on your business, you know, and I think, you know, there are a lot of small businesses that are husband, wife teams and sure. you know, they're, they're dynamic, they're creative, they work well together and that can be a real secret sauce. Absolutely. You know, well, if, you know, if your wife is, is, is also your friend and, and you can, you can count on each other and you guys can, Communicate, that's that's a big thing, right? Communication is important, right? Even like with you guys, you know, the co- communication and the partnership is extremely important, you know? And if that's not there, then there's so much that you're missing out on, you know? And, yeah. and, and if you have somebody that you have that great relationship with and uh, you can trust each other, obviously, and, and that <laughs> kind of thing. So it's a home run. Yeah, and that's I think that people don't understand. You can go into business with a lot of people, right? You can sign an agreement and be a business partner with somebody, but there, not we are not like that at all. I mean, we have been. I've been at Jody's house. Jody's been at my house. We've spent many late nights in my shop working on Jody's eighty-eight, 88 Chevy, Chevy van. van. We've been at Jody's <laughs> house working on stuff. It's just we do stuff that that. <clears throat> I think you have to have that. I think that's more important, the relationship with somebody and the trust to know that they're going to be there and they're going to do their part than it is to have, uh, you know, just just other parts of the business that, that don't, the non-tangibles is what I'm saying. The non-tangible parts, that's sure. the tangible part of it. So. <clears throat> so what have you learned that you think is really, really critical for other small to medium-sized shops as they're building their business? So, uh, well, there's a lot. I mean, there's tons. I, I continue learning every day, right? That's the, First off, that's number one. You have to be able to keep yourself open to education, right? You can't, you can't feel like, okay, I've arrived. And I, in my opinion, anyhow, I'm not saying that, you know, that doesn't work for everybody. In my opinion, you I don't believe you can feel like I've arrived. I don't need to learn anything else. You know, just like you mentioned earlier about the IDA, you know, even you guys, you guys, in my opinion, you guys are, are you know, legends in the industry because, you know, you have such great, uh, such a great business. You know, you guys are, you know, you guys are global. I mean, your business is, is expanding every day, you know? So, I mean, you guys, there's a lot that somebody like me that really doesn't know much about software and so forth can learn from, from you folks, right? As long as I keep myself open to it. Right. Yeah. So, um, education, that's extremely important because even a little nugget, you know, from somebody who's been in the business 40 something years and, you know, whatever, and seen major changes in the business, one little nugget could make you think, wow, okay. I didn't think that way. And, you know, it can make you change or, or tweak a little bit, not necessarily change, but tweaking your business. And I, and I think that's another key point, right? Like I, like I mentioned, if, if you're all about setting goals and you, and you know how that works and you're, you know, you have goals set, sometimes it doesn't go exactly as planned, right? Like we didn't plan on the, you know, this airborne virus to hit everybody and kind of change everybody's life, right? Yeah. <laughs> But here it is. So what are we going to do? We're going to crawl under a rock and say, oh, I'm going to come out when it's over. No, we're going to still fight. We're going to still figure out what we have to do. Now it's just a matter of, okay, we have to tweak this to still, you know, get to that goal. Maybe it's, maybe it's three more steps than we wanted to take to get there, but we can still make it happen. Or maybe it's a leap. Maybe I have to leap over that that pothole or whatever to get to the other side, whatever it is. Right. So I think that's one of the things being aware of your environment, being understanding your industry, keeping yourself educated. Um, Networking is important because, you know, like, like you guys, you guys, in my opinion, have more of a brotherhood, I would say, 
than a business partner relationship. Yes, you have that business partner relationship, but you guys have a brotherhood with each other. Yeah, right? he slaps me all the time and then we go to work. <laughs> That's all part of it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, you know, I think I think that's perfect. A perfect analogy is kind of and there's a lot of groups that try to try to create that, but things get in the way. And I, I there's there's a couple of people that um, that do that, that actually have their own businesses. Right. So I know a couple of detailers in the Utah area that have their own businesses, but they are such good partners with each other that oh, one yeah. of them will say, hey, I got a ceramic coating and, I, and I've got stuff in the shop and he'll take it to the other guy's shop who technically should be a competitor, but they work right. with each other all the time. And it's it's an absolutely fabulous relationship. And so I think that that's, that's important. Cool. And like you said, that you can learn something from anybody. I think that you have a lot of knowledge that you could pass off to people being in the, in the, I don't think people realize that folks that have been in the conventional body shop industry can do stuff with a rotary that you can't do with a DA unless you've been using it for a long time, or you can't do with a, a random orbital because I, I watched a guy, um, there's a video out there of a, of a guy trying to do a comparison of a body shop guy with a rotary. And I think he's using, I, it's a roof has or flex. It's basically one of the two. And he, and they're okay. doing the first cut. And this, and the one guy saying, I absolutely know that my flex or my, my uh, roof has is going to do better than your rotary. And when they're done, it's identical. I don't think people understand okay. that, that a body shop guy with a big old, you know, wool pad on a rotary, putting it on its end and cutting into that thing is, is absolutely. And they know because they're going to know if they screw it up, they got to repaint it. And the amount of yeah. work to repaint something makes you do it right. <laughs> you know, so I, I think there's a lot of knowledge you can pass off, too. And I think that's good. As you know, I would encourage you to definitely get involved with uh, more in the IDA set on the committees and then, you know, work to getting into some of those uh, in the MTE, uh, doing some of those yeah. speaking engagements on, on rotaries or on some of the techniques that you can do. Well, you know, as a matter of fact, that's, you know, this coming, um, we, we are, we are on, on the education committee as far as, as the IDA and so forth. And, uh, and I kind of started doing some of that stuff early in the beginning, because once, once I realized the power of the IDA, which was very early on, my first mobile tech, like I mentioned, and, um, you know, I wanted to start giving back because it, it really changed the perception and the direction of where, uh, you know, I was going to take my business real quickly because I, I saw, you know, I was able to see how far along the detailing industry, you know, yep. has, has come. Um, and actually, this coming Mobile Tech 2021, we're probably going to be doing a couple of presentations there as well. So that'll be, nice. uh, that'll that's be awesome. Yeah, nice. That's we, awesome. I can't remember how long we've been doing it, but we've we'll, done at least two every year for, yeah, we'll, we'll have to uh, drop in on your presentation. Yeah. That'll be, that'll be great. Uh, that'd be awesome. So, so you're in beautiful West Palm beach. So how do people find you if they're not heading to the beach? <laughs> So, you know, everything we do is American Detail Corp. So uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, is everything is under American Detail Corp. And that's C-O-R-P. Um, uh, we're located in uh, 2755 Vista Parkway. Pretty easy to find. Um, our phone number, you, you know, the best way to get in touch with us, honestly, is just give us a call or, or hit us up on uh, uh, Instagram or shoot us an email. And, um, you know, we're happy to, you know, have you come in, check out our facility and, uh, go over your vehicle and see what, what the best fit, best services for you. So I, I awesome. love it. So, awesome. and before we go, first of all, thank you very much for being uh, a guest. I mean, you've been, it's been a phenomenal discussion. We could keep going. I know yeah. for another 30 you, minutes. You and I could probably start talking oh, about yeah. hot rods geek and out for the next so, hour. Yeah. So, oh. but we want to remind was, you. Yep about our buff and shine promotion so every month we're giving away a box of buff and shine pads one month of rotafest software free with some business consulting to help you fine tune your business and give you some some tools to help you in that so all you have to do is give buff and shine some love hashtag buff and shine mfg 
reflection artist and Rotafest, and you are entered in for the goodies. So. Yep, and it's a big grab bag. There's, it's a it's huge awesome. box. It is a huge box of pads. I'm telling you, by the time I divide the 10 boxes of pads that I've got into you know, uh, 12 for the month, it is gonna be a ton of stuff. It is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars of free stuff. So it's gonna be fun. Uh, it's gonna so. be awesome. We're doing it for a year. You can do it as many times as you like. So anybody that sees this, please do that and share it with everybody. Um, and John, I, I love talking to you. This has been awesome. Um, I'm sure we'll do some follow-up stuff. And uh, yeah, we should definitely get together at MTE and swap some some stories about hot rods and chopping and lead and anybody that's ever touched lead that is yeah. a, that is a different <laughs> animal that is you are literally <laughs> dealing with liquid metal that's it yep. well thank Absolutely. you so much man yeah thank you guys so much it was, it was a pleasure it really was all right man and thank you guys for tuning in every week we will make this available on our podcast and, and on, on the YouTube, YouTube channel subscribe 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 subscribe, subscribe and share and uh, we will check you guys same time same bat channel just next week right here at Rotafest see, see you later guys thank you yep.